Hello, beautiful makers. Welcome to episode seven of Stitching the High Notes, a podcast about knitting, sewing, cross-stitching, and all things crafty. My name is Joanna, and you can find me on the internets as Opera Joe. You can also find show notes on stitchingthehighnotes.blogspot.com or in the Ravelry group. You are encouraged to join. We are a small but mighty but ever-growing group of knitting misfits in Ravelry. And in the group, there are um, cowl details. There are strings of yarny enabling. I enjoy I enjoy you. I encourage you to join us. <laughs> so, yes, welcome. Where to begin? OMG, guys, this past week, the past couple of weeks, because this is a bi weekly uh, video cast, podcast, if you will. And a lot has happened. A lot has happened. I'll go into more detail at the end in the recitative backstage knitting segment. Um, but I did want to give a brief but hopefully in-depth thank you. A holy hearted, huge, oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. Thank you to all of the new viewers and welcome back to returning viewers. This week has been crazy. Let me just run it down really quickly for you. So I think it was on Monday, beautiful Jilly of the Knitting Broomstick podcast announced her winners of the Doctor Who Cal and I won, I won a prize. <laughs> I won a Doctor Who project bag. I am so excited. Thank you so much, Jilly, for hosting such a wonderful, inspiring cow. And thank you for giving another shout out um, for this podcast. Thank you so much. You are awesome. You are amazing. So that day was amazing. And then Sue and Chelsea of the Legacy Knits podcast. I've talked about them before. I adore them. They're wonderful. And Sue, I wake up every morning and watch her wonderful Periscope broadcasts, if you will. And I think it was Monday or Tuesday, Sue gave me a shout out on Instagram. It was like getting a shout out from the president of Knitting Nation. <laughs> so good. I mean, remember what I said a couple of episodes of what I would be like if they ever watched this epi like podcast? Sue of Legacy Knit, Sue and Chelsea. Hi! If you are watching this, that would be amazing. But it's happened. It's happened. So, as a, thank you so much, Sue. And thank you so much, Chelsea. I hope you are doing well with your new job. But I just, it started this avalanche of overwhelming support and positive feedback about this wee little podcast that is one of a bajillion, as I have said, and I'm just so grateful. And then it did it. It didn't stop there, guys. I got some wonderful notes from other podcasters that I adore and very supportive and welcoming me to this podcasting community. And then, remember what I said a couple of episodes ago of what would happen if Tracy or Jody of the Gorsha Girls watched this podcast? <laughs> Tracy and Jody of the Gorsha Girls, hi guys, if you ever watch this, which I will die from excitement if you ever watch this podcast. Love you guys. <laughs> Slap my tushy and call me dead, you guys. It happened. <laughs> Tracy, Tracy, Tracy of the Grocery Girls podcast gave me a shout out on Instagram as well. And another like avalanche of support happened. I know I'm totally humble bragging right now, but please indulge me because I know a lot of you that watch this podcast and many others, it's it's a wonderful movement that is happening that I'm just so humbled to be a part of. And that I do not take for granted any day to have the 
option to turn on a knitting crafting podcast, decompress, totally get away from the world and feel like productive and get that creative juice flowing in my brain after a long day of work or, you know, I'm very lucky that I work in two creative fields. Um, but to have something, oh, I just, I just, I can't even, I just can't even. So there are a bunch of you new subscribers that have joined the podcast and thank you so much. As of today, there are 443 subscribers. I never, I never thought that would happen. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you so much. And I think when we hit the 500 mark, which hopefully will happen, I think a giveaway will be in order. So I'll, I'm thinking of what to get for that giveaway and I want to get something special and I am trying to figure out the logistics. People do it usually a different way, either through Instagram or encouraging people to join on Ravelry. So I'll think through that and let you guys know all the details. Do I'm on Instagram all the time, a little bit too much. It's kind of like my new Facebook <laughs> in a way, in a more healthy, creative way, I think. Um, but yeah, check out Insta my Instagram feed if um, for details if I released them before um, I podcast again. But all of that is to say, I'm looking at my little show notes here, that I am bursting with smiles right now and gratitude. And thank you so much. You guys, I'm going to do awkward heart. Thank you. You guys are amazing. Okay, let's get on to some knitting amazingness. All right, to begin the podcast, we always do tea time. Today's tea is in a mug that has lipstick on it now <laughs> that has ironically the word coffee on it. <laughs> and it has a quote the Favorite Drink of the Civilized World by Thomas Jefferson. And I picked up this mug actually at Monticello back in the day. God, I think that was, I think that was like 10 years ago now. No. 15, 14 years ago? Ooh. Time, time is crazy. Anyway, the tea I am drinking is new me. Get ready, guys. It is chocolate mint tea. I don't think I've shown this on the podcast. I know they have. I'm, I think I'm, I think I might have done chocolate rooibos. Rooibos. This is amazing. If you need something a little bit sweet but refreshing, it's delightful. I'll be switching from this directly to caffeination very shortly, though. So just so you know it's about oh I didn't say the date it is Sunday July 17th double checking and it's about 11 a.m. in the morning and um yeah I'll give more details about why I'm still kind of recovering <laughs> and rest it to deep but let's get started with some nitty goodness so you might uh you might see that Things have gotten a little in increasingly nerdy around here. <laughs> As you probably know, I'm going to Comic-Con this week. <laughs> Cannot contain my excitement. Just just be prepared. Things are going to be an all time at an all time nerdy high level the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So I'm going to start today with what I'm sewing. So as you will see behind me, this is part of my cosplay outfit for Comic Con. It is a X Wing Rebel Pilot uniform. <laughs> which I purchased on the amazon.com and I am in the process of sewing together, figuring out how to sew together the belt, which will go around the bottom here and kind of hang 
by the legs. And then I'm also making, I have this stuff here. I'm going to be crafty today and the next couple of days. I am going to beg somebody at the same shop <laughs> to chop these up or just go buy a saw at Ace Hardware. But I have these wooden dowels. And these smaller ones will go on the belt and in this pocket that's like right here. And I'm chopping them up into segments. And then I have these bigger ones. I have two packages of these, which I think will go be chopped up into the, about this size. And I'm building a... I'm building building. I'm creating a, a flare. These are flares. And so this will go on a circle around my boot, a bootstrap kind of flare holder. And I got some black elastic, which I'll sew on top of this. And then the dowels will go through there. And then I'm painting the dowels with good old Martha Stewart metallic paint. So I'm going to do a vlog. I'm going to attempt to do a vlog um, of me making all of this stuff, which I'll release after I get back from Comic-Con, as well as with footage of Comic-Con. So, <laughs> so excited. So, that is in the works. I also have been pulling on all of my nerdy attire, as you can see. Good old Death Star. Doop. I think I got this on modcloth.com. Um pretty good. And then I have some um, other nerdy merchandise on the way, which sadly isn't here yet. It's due to come tomorrow. But it's uh, stuff that I got from thinkgeek.com because on Friday, so I fly down Thursday, Friday I'm going to, um, Friday my friend Ashley and I are going to go to the Game of Thrones panel and uh, I think the Walking Dead panel, which she's super into, I'm trying to get into, you guys. I just, I think if you guys have, if any of you watch it and have any pointers on how maybe I could skip around so I kind of have more context of what they're talking about the last season, season six, I think, let me know. My coworkers are like, do it, you can do it. Zombies, man, just they have never been my thing. Vampires, uh, Game of Thrones is just as like gory, so you think I'd be fine, but zo zombies, it's just I don't know, it's weird, it's weird, man. Anyway, so Friday we're doing that, so we're not gonna like dress up in this guy, but um, in our cosplay. But I bought a dress, a maxi dress, which you will see. And I bought a Game of Thrones Infinity Scarf, which you will see, which, you know, it's San Diego, so it's not going to be, it's going to be warm um, and hot, but it's a conference. It's in a hotel, so the AC is going to be crazy blasting. So at least that's my hope. So the scarf will be needed. And then I bought um, a little backpack to go with this outfit, which I might wear during the whole time. And then... That leads me into another sewing project, which I just completed yesterday, which is <laughs> a project bag. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. Here's the lining. It's kind of like a retro nod to the 60s original Star Trek. So you're like Star Wars, Star Trek, WTF. I love both. I love them almost equally. I think sometimes one edges out the other depending on kind of the fandom buzz happening. But I love this. This is a project bag pattern by Nicole from Hugh Loco. She released it for free last year and I think you can still get it. It's called a holiday bag and the uh, template she has has it for fabric up here piece and a different contrasting fabric down here but I just did it all in one fell swoop and I went for the yellow zipper 
and I have like a little tag here. And the interfacing I did was um, a medium, I don't have it here with me, but it's like a real um, light kind of medium um, weight to it. I've made some bags that are like really sturdy and they're great, but I wanted something a little floppy so then I can go like this and stuff it in my backpack, which you will see. I'm trying not to reveal everything because I want you guys to see it in action. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then there's a future whip in here, which I'll, I'll just tell you now. But, um, so I'm gonna show you some socks in a bit that I have cast on that are my Comic-Con cow, which I'll give details about in a second as well. Um, but I realized, you know, I'm going to need something where I'm not even thinking and what better to cast on than a pair of vanilla socks. So yeah, it's happening. And as I was looking for yarn in my stash, I found another nerdy colorway that's just waiting to be made. <laughs> Felici, good old Felici. This is in the Time Traveler colorway, which is a nod to Doctor Who and Tom Baker, the fourth Doctor's scarf, which I'll plop a picture up right here. So I'm going to cast on, I'll probably cast on just before or maybe on the plane, although it's, it's a short plane ride, so I need to cast on before. But um, just cast on a pair of vanilla socks so I can just make those puppies as I'm in line or whatever. I'm anticipating that that on Friday and on Sunday I'll have some knitting time. On Saturday I think we're going to be running around all over the place and plus my friend has warned me her costume is going to be amazing. Ashley I hope you don't mind me grabbing photos from Instagram. I'll try to ask for permission <laughs> before I do this but She's going as Rey from um, The Force Awakens, and I'm sure she's going to get stopped for photos because she kind of looks like her a little bit, too. She has the same stature, and and um, I might get stopped. I'm kind of like, hey, guys, what's going on Star Wars? But <laughs> so, yeah, so we're figuring out our, our schedules right now, and... Yeah, so Comic-Con cow. So there is a cow going on that I I think I did the cow a little bit too early in the existence of this podcast, but I would just I wanted to do something so badly and there are an, a growing amount of us that are taking part. I encourage you to check it out. It's a cow that where you can knit so spin do whatever. Um, something related to comic books or something geeky. It doesn't have to be necessarily a comic book like Superman character. And a lot of times nerdy fandom things are turned into comic books. So if you have a question of something is eligible, just let me know. Um, it started July 1st. It goes until July 31st. Um, there have been some finished objects in the threads already. All of the details are in the Ravelry group. Um, there are some lovely prizes. Um, Tongari from Ravelry has donated one of three uh, project bags of the winner's choosing. And I have donated a skein of hedgehog fibers and also a skein, a mini skein, one of two that I had purchased from uh, the Fawn and the Fox. Oh, this guy and if if you want to donate you know a nerdy skein of yarn or something I totally welcome it to, or a pattern or anything um, please let me know you can instant message me um, or direct message me on Ravelry or Instagram or email me at operajoenits at gmail.com okay I need a little tea I'm getting a little husky the last sewing update that I'll show you is the shirt that I talked about last time, which is this green one or this striped one. It's the one this model is making or making, wearing. And I said that when I went up for the 4th of July weekend that I was going to make it with my mama. Well, 
family came over and we were visiting, but I did cut it out, cut it out. So I've got it all right here, <laughs> ready to go. I think this is definitely gonna be a test shirt and I might need different fabric. Plus this is the right side. This is the wrong side. I had it wrong before, but um, the fabric is super thin and kind of weird. So I'm a little bit intimidated. And so I'm kind of taking this as like, this is a test ride, just kind of get used to it. And then I might make, might get some sturdier knit fabric and um, use the pattern and do it again. So I'm super excited. Finished objects. I have a finished object. Yay! I finished my Arnie and Carlos socks. And these are, have been entered as part of the Grocery Girls' second sock cow. So I thank you so much. And the he I'm distracted because the heel is kind of wonky on this one. But yeah, I love, 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 love this yarn. I have a couple of more skeins to make my mom some socks. Um, I'm definitely going to block these guys and kind of get it all together here. And it was a joy to knit and I'm kind of glad that they're done <laughs> and off the, off the needles. So that is my finished object for this week. Dash Dash update, and I'll put my little ticker factory ticker right here. I am now up to 853.98 meters towards my 3,000 meter goal. I'm cutting it close. It's possible. I, ha I have a couple of shawls on the needles, a few shawls on the needles, so we'll see. Which, which will lead us to whips. Whips, works in progress. So on my needles, I have many things, <laughs> but there are three that I'm gonna show you today. I um, haven't worked on my falling water scarf and I still need to work on my, um, I need to turn the heel, maybe I'll do that today. I need to turn the heel on my my cup of tea socks, which I want to enter for the second sock cowl. And um, I've got my monkey socks. I've got a couple other, and the Orlando shawl. I just haven't touched those because I was so entranced by these works in progress. So my architecture shawl is chugging along. It's in my little skein in the big wool bag. Deets are in the show notes. And this is, I've done a lot since I last podcasted. So this is what I've done. Oh, the stitch definition really shows up well on the camera. It kind of looks like a Batman Wonder Woman <laughs> symbol. But it's going so well. I had just done just above that border last time at the bottom and so I've done all of this in the last couple of weeks. I love, 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 love the pattern because the moment you're kind of done overdoing a certain stitch type, you switch to a different one. It's a paid for pattern so I won't go into too much detail about it but it's great. Stitch markers again are Outlander. I've got my homespun house little pine cone progress keeper to mark where I podcasted, so right now. And the yarn is Miss Babs in the Caroline base in the pewter colorway, and it is so soft and lofty. I think you can kind of see the, the drape in the hand, and that's pre-blocked, so I'm loving the fabric. It's definitely gonna be a scarf, kind of shawl type thing. I'm making this for my friend Radha Salava. I have to say it with the R rolled. 
I think every time she calls me or I call her, we roll the R more and more because it's starting to... Sorry, your name is kind of becoming a joke, Radoslava. <laughs> but but um, this is for her, for her birthday last year. <laughs> um, but she picked out the yarn and it's super special. So that's coming along and it's... Ugh, it's I love it. It's addictive. It's an addictive... Potato chippy, that's the term. It's a potato chippy knit. That's, that's whip number one. Whip number two is in my beloved Mrs. Brown's bags. <sighs> I love this bag. And inside, gotta get all the deets about the yarn here. So I have cast on Don't mind <laughs> the ends there. My Pixel Rise Socks by Kemper Ray of the Junk Yarn Podcast and Yarns. Yay! And I'll go into details about this adorableness in a minute. So this is the first time I'm doing color work. And I'm addicted. <laughs> I love it. I was so intimidated to do it. Um, I've watched a few videos on how best to hold your yarns, namely Very Pink Knits on YouTube. Um, some of you might be familiar with her, familiar with her, um, her series of tutorials and, and giveaways and whatnot. I learned a lot from her. That's, she's partly how I learned how to knit. So check her out. But so I'm holding like the main yarn in this hand and the other yarn in this hand and I'm knitting English style, which is how I normally throwing um, and then doing continental with the left hand and it's still a little wonky, but it's going faster and faster. And um, I think my, what do you call those things? I think they're looking okay. I think my my gauge is not too tight. You can see it's a little, it kind of goes in a little bit here. I've tried them on. I think definitely, I think aggressive blocking is going to be in order for these guys. Um, I'm really going to take careful measurements because I, these are mine and I will keep them forever. <laughs> but I love them. So the yarn for the heels, toes, and cuffs I picked up at my local yarn shop. Avenue Yarns and it's this yummy gray color and it's dream in color yarn in the smooshy base and the gray tabby colorway and it's a hundred percent superwash merino I should have done my nails before this maybe I should put black nails on for Kabaka Anyway, and inside, it's like a little lovely chocolate case of yarn here. I don't know if you can see. Look at that. That's awkward. But, <laughs> but these are all superhero minis from Junk Yarn, which I've talked about quite a bit on this and I'll plop up all the different colorways down here um, there's so much fun so I am loving this pattern it's super intuitive you definitely I have to look at the chart you know it's something you have to look at but um, once you get into a rhythm of it it's really awesome and I love that you get to change colors it's really cool. So I'm super digging it. And I'm going to keep this out because I'm going to talk about this guy in a minute. So that is whip number two. Whip number three. And this will be the last whip that I'll talk about this week. So I've talked about this in the first and maybe second episodes. And I finally cast it on. And it is to celebrate Charlotte's Web, the beloved children's book. And so it's in this 
wonderful bag. Ah, oh, it's so good. It's got a little loop de loo, and this is a progress keeper slash zipper pull. And the inside is so great. You see the lining? It's like little little flowers with yarn. And this, I'll pop up a picture too so you can see it better. But this is the Love of Spiders shawl by Melanie Berg. And I got the same colorways as on the picture, but and this will be for my Aunt Shirley. Hi, Aunt Shirley! And this um, is for her birthday last year, <laughs> or this year, a couple of months ago. And she knew she knows I'm making this, so no spoilers needed. Um, but here are the yarns. Oh, they're so. Mm. Isn't it like it's every every almost every podcaster I know does this? I mean, because you're taught like this is how you feel if you can tolerate the yarn, you know, or if you if you truly like wearing the yarn, is you hold it up to your neck because it's so sensitive. But every time somebody holds it up, they just go. Mm. <laughs> So this is Sunshine Yarns, and this is in the Charlotte colorway, so like the spider. And this is in the Radiant, woo, and it is Radiant colorway. And it is a MCN base. And it is 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. And here are the... And they're set in, um, hand-dyed in Boulder, Colorado. So, awesome. Then, this is what I've got so far. Let me figure out how to show this. Let's see, it's so awkward showing shawls. There we go. Hey, I'm loving the fabric. I think you know it's it'll even out a little bit with blocking. I was worried the fabric was a little bit too big or see through, but that's how it's supposed to be. I'm doing this on size six needles and I'm using my Carbons interchangeables. And I'm, you know, keeping with the color work. Um, and I'm, for the first time, I'm carrying the yarn up on the side, which you can kind of see there, um, so that I don't have to constantly like cut it off like I'm doing. I don't know if I have to do this on these socks. If you guys know, let me know, but cut it off. Maybe I can just carry it up, but I feel like on a sock that would create like a really big ridge. So I don't know, let me know. But I am so excited. I did all of this like in a couple of hours. So I always say this with shawls. Oh, it's gonna go so fast. But before you know it, it's going to be like 300 stitches on the needles and take like half an hour to get through one row. So <laughs> I'm living it up right now, <laughs> but I love this. I think Aunt Shirley's going to really love this shawl. So, and I'm, I want to listen to, I have the audio book of Charlotte's web and I have a, you know, the actual books too, but when you're knitting audio books are better. And so I want to listen to it while I make it in here and I love I love the interfacing of this bag I don't know why I'm like super into interfacing <laughs> it's weird so that's my last whip that I will show this week Yay! acquisitions so I teased one of my acquisitions here which is I got one I got two progress keepers from wonderful Chelsea of Sucra Sucra miniatures and I was inspired by, let me get, see if I can get that to focus. 
I was inspired by, I think Candace, uh, I think you have one of these, these guys from the Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast. And it's a bacon cheeseburger, as you do. I love it. And it's even got like a little purple onion. I'm so not focusing. Yeah. Love that. That's one. And then what sparked me to get to make my recent purchase was this guy, which I'm going to awkwardly show. Oh, pfft. let's try this again. I'm trying not to show my nails because they're not done. But let's just go in. We're all friends. It's a donut. Look at the detail and the craftsmanship. Chelsea, you're amazing. And this, um, the proceeds for this purchase went to the GoFundMe campaign, I believe, for the Pulse um, shooting victims and survivors. So I am so happy to do a wee bit to show my support and then also get a reminder of the outpouring of love that happens when tragedy strikes. And unfortunately, it's happening a little bit too often lately. We're not going to go into that because this is our knitting, crafting retreat from all that. But love. The last acquisition that I'll show you is not necessary is not knitting related or sewing related, but it is creative related. And it is a wonderful gift from my friend Beryl, who is leaving my our place of employment very shortly. And I was blown away by it and I just cannot express my gratitude. So some background before I show this just briefly. Um, I've shown my bullet journal before on the podcast it's right here and my little notebook cover from little bobbins, Danny, and it's reawakened this, this side of my brain that's, you know, when you get older, you, and especially as I was growing up, computers were becoming more, um, prevalent. But it's, you know, awakened sketching and drawing and all this stuff. Anyway, and along with bullet journaling, I started to work on my handwriting. And my friend Radoslava, Radoslava introduced me to the world of um, calligraphy and this kind of nerdy stuff. Inkwell amazingness. And so I've, you know, been dabbling in it here and there. I enjoy it immensely. And Beryl knew about all of this and saw the joy that it brought me. And she, with the help of her wonderful, beautiful girlfriend, bought me, get ready, try to do this without It's a quill calligraphy pen. Look how beautiful. I mean, come on. It's amazing. I've written with it a, a little bit. I'm going to write her note today. And it comes with um, ink that's like a brownish ink. And it comes with a bunch of other nibs to change what kind of style and uh, how fine a point of calligraphy you want to do. And it also comes with wax for a wax seal. And she bought me... A J wax seal stamp. I mean, come on, Beryl. Jeez Louise, lady. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
I like was bawling. I think I went, I hid it from everybody. I went into ugly crying in the bathroom. <laughs> Not that I'm ashamed, but you know, it's like place of business. You don't want to like go into the ugly cry. But I used to, when I was a kid, we used to go to Half Moon Bay all the time, my family and I. And there was this store that had, this was like in the early, early 90s, like 90. Two ninety three 93 or something. I can hear my sister screaming at me because she's the keeper of memories and dates. But I used to do this all the time. I went through this phase where I was like getting crystals and like poison rings and was like super into witchy stuff, even though I wasn't into witchy stuff. <laughs> and I had like a stamp. I don't know where it is. So I am so looking forward to this. And using this beautiful, beautiful set, I feel that I am not worthy, but I am so grateful. <sighs> if any of you have ever written with calligraphy pens like this, let me know. Because, and fountain pens, because, you know, or if you haven't, I encourage you to try it out. I know for me, I've always not been very happy with my handwriting and... The moment in the in cursive, the moment that I didn't have to write in cursive in school, which I think was like fourth grade or something, I was like, peace, I'm doing print all the time. <laughs> so when I write, when I used to write in cursive until I started practicing recently, um, it looked like a third grader. So it was like, hmm. and when I was practicing with just a normal pen, it still was a little rocky. Magic happened when Radoslava brought out her pens and ink. And you get the right nib and the right flow and the right handle. And it's just, I was like, oh, that's, that's, how, I'm, that's how I'm supposed to write. Oh, okay. I got it. Yeah. That's it for acquisitions. What I'm jonesing for. So a lot of you have heard this already, but I'm so looking forward to... The upcoming magazine rib by Eric of the Sticks Plus Twine podcast and Devin of the Handmade and Woolen podcast. They have started a magazine that is tailored to knitting for men and those who knit for them. And I'm so looking forward to that. The moment that it is available for subscription, I'm there. I'm, I encourage you to check it out. I'll put the details in the show notes. Um, also what I'm Jones in for is, <laughs> it feels kind of weird bringing it up here, but, uh, Melissa, hi Melissa, if you ever watch this, you were amazing. Melissa of the Spicy Homemaker podcast, another one that you should check out if you don't already watch it. She announced that she's doing an advent calendar swap and I'll leave her Ravelry thread, all the deets for you to look it up there, but I signed up for it. <laughs> so I'm jumping into the deep end here on the swaps. I've kind of put it off for a while because I'm building up my mini scrap collection. Um, but I love advent calendars and I loved this idea. So I signed up for the large version, which is um, I could not regurgitate all of the details, but it's basically 25 minis of independently dyed yarn. That's the kind of catch for this Advent um, swap. So I'm super excited. Is it Christmas yet? Recitative and backstage knitting. So as I talk about the happenings of the last couple of weeks, I'll plug in some photos and some videos here. Um, so what has been going on? So the last couple of weeks, last weekend, my sister came down to visit, um, which was delightful. It was the first time in a really long time since I think she's gotten married that we've had like a one-on-one -on -one sister's weekend, which was great. Um, and this was kind of the last hurrah before the baby, um, she's due at the end of September. So it was a wonderful time to spend with her. She's about six, six months pregnant now, 30 in her 30th week, I think. So you can feel, I felt the baby kick, which was surreal. <laughs> and 
it was it was just wonderful. We went we took some lovely walks. We um, we grew up a uh, part of the time here in Berkeley, where is which is where I live. And um, so we went to some of our old haunts from our childhood, which we hadn't done in some time. And I, I don't know if we've done that one on one, which was really cool. Um, so it was really cool. And we took a walk around my neighborhood and got some lovely flora photos. Um, yeah, it was, it was just a lot of fun. That was really, really cool. Um, I started to read uh, a book again, <laughs> meaning not almost a book, meaning not an audio book. Um, I'm reading it on my Kindle, my Kindle Paperwhite, which I love. Um, on Sue's magical, wonderful, lovely Sue's Periscopes, morning Periscopes, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, there was this flurry of chit chat about summer reads, about summer books. And I'm still like combing my way through them because it was just a crazy amount of info. But one that stood out that has been recommended to me by various people and other podcasters is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. And I downloaded the sample to check it out. And it is one of those books where you're just sucked right in and you just cannot put down. Um, I haven't had that experience since Harry Potter. I, I'm hesitant to say that this is at the same level because Harry Potter is like Harry Potter, y'all. But the writing in this, it's a young adult, I think, series. Um, but it doesn't seem like that um, to me anyway. Um, and it's it's great. I just, I cannot put it down. Once I get started, I just keep reading, which is wonderful. That's how it used to be for me. <laughs> um, but I do love my audiobooks. I'm still working my way through the Outlander series. I'm on the Fiery Cross right now. And also, Cy okay, I know some people get annoyed with talking about shows. So I'm going to put up a timestamp here of where to forward this video to, but I'm going to talk about the finale of Outlander. Outlander is not for children. It's for adults only. I'm doing my CC of the geeky girls like warning here. <laughs> so Outlander finale was, it was more than I had hoped for which is weird. It was a feature length. It was 90 minutes. Um, I was kind of like, how are they going to jam pack to everything that happened in that second book? Cause they, there was a lot that they hadn't touched upon and they kind of did things reverse, um, in the show. So they introduced Roger and Bree, some big spoiler, like go to that timestamp. If you don't want to know anything about Outlander or the books, because I do not want to ruin it for you. It's amazing. But I think it's fun to like have, if you have read about it, it's wonderful to see somebody else share their excitement and joy and insight into a show or a book or whatever. So I'm going to do it. So um, Brie and Roger were introduced. Brianna is uh, Jamie and Claire's daughter. And Roger is uh, the aunt's or descendant of Gilly and Dougal that I know of. I haven't made my way through all the books, so I'm sure some of you who have are like screaming at me about blah, 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 or something. Um, and um, they started the episode in 1968, and it was wonderful. I think it was 1968, yeah. And so it was just, the era, the the costumes, the music. Don't even get me started on the music editing for this show. Oh, so good. And, um, you know, that there was that instant chemistry between Brie and Roger, which was fantastic. I love how they aged Claire. So she's not, like, got prosthetic wrinkles on and stuff. She's just got a little bit of touch of gray in her hair. The actress is, I feel like we're watching the blossoming of a wonderful 
mastery master of an actress before our eyes like every episode she gets stronger and stronger in her skills it's very interesting let me know if you think the same but her body language was different she moved a little bit different it was great and then um they flash back back and forth between 1968 and then the last day that claire is with jamie which was the day of the battle of culloden and I loved how they shot and did the, uh, how Claire went back through the stones. It was heartbreaking. I was like all of the feels for this episode. It was, ugh. And then they did like this choreographed dance, which I heard them say that they kind of did this weird choreographed dance of getting her to the stones. Where Jamie, you know, she had her back turned and was just like, can't do it. And he's like, it's okay, baby. It's okay. Oh, it's just so great. And, um, yeah, I mean, I could go on and on, but I will not. But it was, it was wonderful. So, side note to that is that the costumes for that series are amazing. Terry Dressbach, I believe is her name. Um, and she is the wife of the showrunner. Uh, Ron Moore, I believe is his name. Um, and she, I mean, just the the variety and the the depth of technique um, for her and her crew for the series is um, and so inspiring and so wonderful. At Comic Con, she's gonna be there. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to go to the panel that she's on and then possibly get an autograph from her. She's amazing. She's amazing. Um, as well as, yeah, she's amazing as the whole crew. They have like an embroidery team. If you check out her blog or check out, um, any of the footage with her being interviewed, if the how to, they, how they made the costumes, it's, um, it's craftsmanship. Masters of craft, y'all. Masters of craft. That's an inside joke, which I'll tell you about later. <laughs> Some other time. <laughs> but, um, so, Outlander. How the heck did I get to Outlander? Yeah, I guess it was just on my mind. It was it was wonderful. Um, and then also, uh, the last thing I'll talk about, a couple of things I'll talk about um, in my recitative, is uh, that I went to a bachelorette party on Friday <laughs> for Ashley. <laughs> And I'll show some of the photos here and we'll go too crazy. It wasn't like, you know, there were no strippers. There were no, you know, interesting necklaces of sort, some sorts. But we had a blast. We went to a great um, bar and kind of lounge in the city in San Francisco. And then we went and there was just a small group, which was a lot of fun. It's fun when it's, you know, if it's like 15 people going to to different venues it can be a little crazy um and then we went to ashley's favorite karaoke bar in the city festa which is in japantown in a japanese mall we're in a japanese mall <laughs> i need And that was very interesting. I hadn't been in that mall in a long time. I've been to like a sushi boat place there. Um, I used to live nearby. So it was kind of cool being back in the old hood. And um, it was so much fun. She loves karaoke. So it was great to see her in her element. And we got a table. We nabbed a table just in time. Like right in the front. So we had like a front row seat to all the karaoke madness. And... There were so many tech bros and tech ladies <laughs> in the venue because San Francisco is booming right now with the tech industry. And um, Ashley requested that I sing a song from Phantom of the Opera to show the operatic skills. So I got up and <laughs> blasted out um, wishing you were somehow here again. I used to love, love that musical. And it's been years since I had heard it or sung it. So I was kind of like, oh yeah, yeah. That kind of situation. 
and I just let it rip and it like, it was eerie. It like the whole room just went, <laughs> cause you're hearing like pop songs and people going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was like, oh, it was, yeah, it was intense. So, um, note to self, if I'm at a karaoke bar again, do opera because the tech bros love it. And by the way, I am single. <laughs> so I have a, I have now a secret strategy about how to, uh, how to, how to open the conversation, so to speak. So <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Um, and then what else happened the last couple weeks? I think that's it. We, we finished last time I podcasted, it was the last performance of Mahler two. So we did that and we had, um, Oh, I got, I got the, um, I got my five year award for five seasons with San Francisco symphony. So that was wonderful. We got that at the after party for the season. And that was so special. I can't believe it's been five seasons already. It's so much has happened and I'm just so grateful for having that place to perform. It was wonderful. Um, the couple of days before that, which I didn't talk about on the podcast in the fall, I will talk about it, but I had a super secret singing gig that was so it was so much fun. I'm under contract, so I can't talk about it. <laughs> that should tell you the level of excitement that I was at. So that was really cool. And then I think that's it. Weight Watchers, little Weight Watchers update. Um, I'm struggling with it right now. I need to get, get my booty to a meeting um, and kind of get serious here. I'm going to do Comic-Con and, and come back full steam. I'm doing Simply Filling, which is, um, which means that you're really focusing on unprocessed foods and whole foods, which is really how we all should be. But sometimes, Tracy, those Oreos that you put on Instagram the other day, I'm gluten-free. I have been for years now, but they're gluten-free versions of cookies, y'all. Gluten-free is not a health situation. Obvi, I have figured out ways around it <laughs> to enjoy sweets and everything good. But yeah, so Weight Watchers is getting there. I feel a little bit more motivated in a different way because I am sewing again and oh, and some of the feedback from y'all in the Ravelry group about your weight loss journeys or your health journeys have been so inspiring and thank you so much for sharing them with me and others. Um, there was a wonderful uh, lady, I believe on Ravelry, can't remember your name, I'm so sorry because I'm doing this off the cuff here, but um, you mentioned um, that you two put off making a sweater until you're at a, you know, a better weight and that you um, might be casting on a, um, what was it? It was how, how I am right now sweater or something. And I was like, there's a cow in there somewhere. So future, future thought. Um, but I think that might be, I'm checking out my show notes here. I'll do a really quick. I did, I did want to give some shout outs really quick to some new podcasts that I've been watching. So I'm just going to run down the old list here and I encourage you to check out the show notes and to check out these wonderful podcasters because they're awesome. And let me grab some tea before I do that. <laughs> so the first one I want to mention is So Sweet Violet with lovely jewels. I think um, Katie and someone else recommended, maybe Danny of Little Bobbins, recommended so sweet jewels so so sweet violet oh jewels i love your podcast it is so i just i feel so relaxed when i watch it and so inspired your bags are just so beautiful your aesthetic is just so encompassingly warm and inviting and lovely it's sweet you it's perfect I love it. And she has a blog as well and an Etsy shop. So check her out. 
I've mentioned her, I think, before, but um, Becky of the Stringing It Together, Singing It Together podcast just recently did an episode like a week, week and a half ago. Um, and I believe she's on her way. She's at like the Tanglewood area right now. Um, and then moving to, uh, to opera, moving to Germany and she's a fellow opera singer. And so I love her podcast, not only because she's a wonderful knitter, um, and love everything that she makes, but also it's kind of cool to have a fellow singer and a fellow musician podcasting in this wonderful world. So Becky, um, another one that I have been watching and I'm not sure if I've mentioned or not is lovely Marsha who lives in Canada. She has the fairly little twitch and stitch podcast. So I recommend you check her out and, um, also, Katrina of the Yarn 30 podcast, who is the wonderful dyer behind Cat's Kettle. I'm on the hunt for some of your yarn, Katrina. It's going to happen soon. And you're, I'm so mad that I missed out on your Halloween um, club because I obviously love <laughs> Halloween and dressing up. That is my favorite holiday. It comes first before Christmas. Yeah. So, but I check out her podcast. It's wonderful. And check out her Etsy shop. Um, so now what in with Carrie in Portland and Carrie gave me a wonderful shout out recently on an episode and I quickly checked out her podcast and it is wonderful. Carrie, it's so great. And she's a quilter as well, which is spinning and quilting are my next obsessions and I'm holding off because I know I will be obsessed. I live vicariously now through my mom who's a quilter. So, but Carrie, check out her podcast. It is wonderful. I think you have like seven, no, like six. I can't remember how many episodes. I'll pop it down here, but, um, it's great. It's great. Um, also Joanne, great name in Canada. She has the creative mojo podcast and that's new to me and I'm catching up on all those episodes. It's fabulous. And she is Auntie Jo on Instagram. And as a future Auntie Jo, I love that name. Um, and she's, I think, just coming back from Scotland in Europe on a trip with her family. And so, Jo, I've loved, Joanna, I've loved your photos from Inverness in Scotland as a fan of Outlander, obviously I love Scotland, but I also just recently discovered my Scottish roots. Um, so I'm very excited. Check out that creative mojo. Um, three more and then we're done. <laughs> I'm very talky today. I've been like bursting at the seams to podcast. So I'm trying to jam it all in here. Um, the next podcast is with Michelle and Armando, which is the Yarnies podcast. Hi, guys. They are fabulous. Check out their podcast. Another um, duo team, and they're, they're just wonderful. Check them out. Um, the next one, I just started watching a little bit the yesterday and then full on today, which is the Hey Sister podcast with Tabby and Rachel. Hi guys, you are so good. They're on their third episode. They, um, you might've seen them on Instagram. They have like this hundred follower giveaway going on with um, pineapple yarns, which is a new to me yarn that I need to check out. Um, and of course they've already surpassed a hundred cause they're amazing. They're adorable. They're two sisters. I think they live in West Virginia. They have two, they each have a baby that's about the same age and they have children. They're adorable. They're great. They remind me of me, my sister who desperately wants to come on this podcast. <laughs> you will Caroline, you will. Um, and yeah, they're just, they're delightful. Check them out. And then the last one I wanted to mention, uh, mention is I'm starting to watch it actually right now, not this minute, obviously, but just before podcasting, um, that was recommended to me from Jules of the So Sweet Violet podcast. And this is Julie of the Sweet Sparrow Knits podcast. 
and she's also just sweet. It's a perfect name to have in your podcast because you're so sweet and inspiring. Your aesthetic is wonderful. I believe you, Julie, has a uh, Etsy shop as well and a blog too. Um, so check her out. So I think that's it. I think that's, I think I got it all in there. <laughs> I think I got it all in there. Um, thank you again so much for watching. I'm just so grateful for all you returning and new viewers. Um, as I say, every time there are so many podcasts out there. So the, 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 you know, the idea that you take the time to watch little me and spend some time knitting and making something and while I chat and ramble about nerdy things <laughs> is wonderful and daunting to me. So thank you. Um, it, if you haven't, if you're brand new to this, please subscribe, spread the word, um, and give the old thumbs up if you liked this episode. Um, I will have much more footage and Instagram photos in the next few days as I gear up for Comic-Con and also for um, the event itself. So stay tuned and I hope you'll have a wonderful day and I will talk to you all later. Bye! <laughs>